Kia ora and welcome to this short video going over the triangular distribution. The triangular distribution is really useful when we just know three things about a situation. And they are, if we know the minimum value of a random variable, the maximum and the most likely value. So if that's all we know, that x can be anywhere between the minimum and the maximum, but we're given the most likely value, then the triangular distribution is often a good starting point, at least until we can go and get some more information. So this is how we picture a triangular distribution problem. Um, I've got circles around A, B and C because they are really important to help you find the probabilities out. So A is the minimum, B is the maximum and C is the mode. So when you're sketching your picture, make sure you do it in that order and you label A, B, and then C as the mode. If you mix these up, you are gonna come unstuck pretty quickly if you're using the formula to help solve the problems. Okay, so well worth putting A, B, and C up on your fridge or into your revision notes or your mind map or whatever you to study for the November exams. Okay, and if you are planning on using the formula, then it's worth remembering that. You will be given it in the exam, but you don't want to be in a position where you're having to really use it when you're sitting there. You should pretty much know it before you get in there. Okay, so um, a triangular distribution is a continuous distribution, and we're gonna work with the fact that any probability distribution any continuous probability distribution has an area under the curve of 1. And also that the area at any point is 0. So if I have another triangular here and I'm looking for the probability that x is equal to, say, 5, then that probability will be 0. And that should be familiar from the normal distribution. The difference here is that when we're using a triangular distribution, the main thing that's going to help us solve the problem is the formula for the area of a triangle, which is area equals half times the base times the height. And that means that we do have to find the height of the triangle. And we haven't had to do that before. So when you've got the normal distribution, finding the height of that function is utterly useless. And remember, you should never use the, that part of your graphics calculator. When we're working with the triangular distribution, we are going to be trying to figure out the height so that we can find the area of a triangle. Okay, so this is the rather ugly formula for the triangular distribution. Um, students in my class will know my views on this, that really all this is is finding the area of a triangle. Okay, so this is the height part of the triangle. If you want to use the formula, that's fine. Just make sure that you know what your A, your B, and your C are. Notice that we've got two parts of the formula. This bit here is what you use if you're looking for an X value in between A and C. And this part here is what you use if you have an x value between c and b. So we'll come back to this. Okay, We're going to solve a problem first using the formula, then using um, a similar triangle method that I prefer. Okay, So here's a question about Josh and stats. When Josh comes to class, he typically turns up four minutes late. But he could arrive on time, or he could be up to ten minutes late. So we want to find the probability that he gets to class no later than two minutes late. That's question one. Question two is what's the probability that he is over 7.5 minutes late to class? So the first step in solving these problems is to do a sketch. And it is worth making the sketch have a roughly accurate picture of where the mode is sitting. Okay, so you want to be drawing a triangle like this one here. Don't draw it like that. 
all like that. It's not going to help you get a good handle on the problem. So make sure you draw it so that you're clearly showing that the mode is closer to this end than to this end. Okay, so we're going to draw that triangle again. We've got zero here, and we've got four here. Now the first question was to find the probability that he is less than two minutes late. So we can write that as Px less than 2. Remember that's exactly the same as less than or equal to 2. It just doesn't matter. So we're looking to find the area of this triangle. And we're going to do that by saying it's half times the base times the height. So in this situation I've got A is 0 B is 10, and C is 4. So the base here is going to be 2, and the height's going to be given to me by this part of the formula, because x is 2, and that's between 0 and 4. So I can now substitute in the values that I need. So I get 2 times 2 minus 0 divided by the difference between the min and the max, which is 10 minus 0, and the difference between the mode and the min. All right, so that works out to be, well, 12, a half times 2 simplifies, so we get 4 divided by 10 times 4, which simplifies to 1 tenth. Okay, so using the formula, if you are confident with doing it, is a straightforward thing to do. Now we're going to take another slide, which is over 7.5 minutes late. Now the formula part that I want here is for when I'm in this part of the triangle. So it's going to be 2 times b minus x divided by b minus a again, but this time I'm going to have b minus c. And again I've got a is 0, b is 10, C is 4 and X is 7.5. So the probability that X is greater than 7.5 is going to be half times the base, which is 2.5. Right, the base is the this part of the triangle here, 7.5 to 10, times the height. So 2 times 10 minus 7.5 divided by b minus a is 10 and b minus c is 10 minus 4 okay which is one half of 2.5 times 2 times 2.5 divided by 60. So again the half and the 2 go and we're left with 2.5 times 2.5 6.25 divided by 60 so it's going to be just over 1 tenth so 0 0.1042 to four decimal places. Okay, so that's how we solve a basic triangular distribution problem. Right, now I'm going to solve these problems using similar triangles. I know a lot of you would rather do it with the formula, but I'd like you to understand both ways of working, especially if you are aiming at more difficult questions. So we're going to redo the first problem. 
which was the probability that Josh arrives no more than two minutes. So this time I've drawn in, we want the probability that x is less than two. So the, the way we do similar triangles is that the first thing we do is we find the height at the peak point. Now we know that the area of the whole triangle is 1. So we have 1 is equal to half times the base times the height. So 2 is equal to 10 times the height. And here the height means the height at the peak point. So h is equal to 1 fifth. The next thing we do is that we start at the bottom of the triangle and we ask ourselves how far along have we gone towards the peak x value. So in this case we've gone 2 units along out of 4 and that tells me the fraction of the way that I've gone. So the height here will be 2 out of 4, or 1 half, of the peak height, which is 1 tenth, once you've simplified. Now I don't know about you, but I find that easier than using the formula. And this relies on the idea of similar triangles, which is that... Let me try and draw this without making it up. So there's my big triangle, and there's my little triangle. So we can see that the angles in those whoops, the angles in those two triangles are the same. So the ratio of the side lengths are the same. Now you're probably doing that without really thinking about it. But there's some cool geometry in there from back in year 10. So that gives us the height, and now we can very easily go probability that x is less than 2 is equal to half times base, which is 2, times height, which of course is going to give me the same answer as before, 1 tenth. Okay. On this slide, I've written down the steps to follow for doing similar triangles. This is from my PowerPoint that was up on Moodle. Um, but you might want to just make sure you can work through each of those steps on your own now. So pause the video and have a go at doing it this way on your own. Okay, now we're going to try another one using similar triangles. Same question, probably that Josh is more than 5 minutes late. And we've already done the main part of the work here. We know the height at the peak point is 1 fifth. So we want to find the probability that x is greater than 7.5. Right, remember as a second class we're going to pretend that we are an ant and we are trying to walk up the edge of the triangle. So how far have we gone back here from 10? Well we've gone 2.5 units there. And how far is it from 10 back to the peak x value, well it's a total distance of 6. So we get 2.5 divided by 6. So the height here will be 2.5 divided by 6 of the peak height, which is 1 fifth. So that's 5 twelfths of 1 fifth, which turns out to be 1 twelfth. Okay, so what I'm doing there in my head is I'm thinking that this is 5 and this is 5 twelfths and then 5 and 5 simplified. Now that's very messy but I know you guys would do that on your calculator and that's fine. So now I've found that height really easily. The height is 1 twelfth. Much less mess than substituting values into the formula. So the probability that x is greater than 7.5 is half times the base which is 2.5 times the height, which is 1 twelfth. So that works out to be 2.5 over 24, 
or 5 over 48, which magically is going to work out to be 0 0.1042, just as it was before. Okay, and again, here's the slide that breaks those steps down for you to make sure that you can do that on your own. So there you go, simple tri triangular problems using two methods, either using the formula or using similar triangles. Have fun and try and do plenty of practice from the other ones we did in class to make sure that you've really got that sorted out.